are gods, we are kings We march in faith cause we believe we can Change the world to what it needs Stand against our enemies cause we can Yeah We are kings demanding change Cause we believe we can How you doing bro? What's your name? My name's Jacob Jacob As we was walking up There was a group of brothers That were standing with you, right? Yeah and they said that you were, that you were brainwashed. I'm not brainwashed. You're right. You are not brainwashed. These brothers are brainwashed. These brothers need their brains washed. That's right. You see what I'm saying? They have to have their brains washed from the filth that they've learned here. You have a level up on these brothers because you already understand that you're an Israelite. Right. That the Most High God chose you. Now, how long have you known you're an Israelite? Probably like six months. Like six months. Yeah. All right. Being aware that you're an Israelite is a process, you understand? But there has to be a process of elimination and a process of application. You understand that? So once you learn that you're an Israelite, once you learn that you've been chosen by the Most High God, you got to start trying to put things into play. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and that's good. That's good. So what you need is brethren that can help you in that walk. Right. Not brethren that's going to say, just because they're your people, they're gonna say, hey, bro, you brainwashed. Yeah, you know my, what I'm saying? My grandpa been talking to me like, ever since I came to him about it. Yeah. Because like, he a minister. Like, we go to church on, well, we, we worship on Saturdays and okay. stuff like that. And we, only, like, we try to keep the Saturday. Right. And ever since I came to him, he can open up more to me. When I was young, he would tell me, you won't understand until it's your time. Uh, woo, woo, woo. So, like, when I started going to him my own way, then he started talking to me. And, like, everything that he said when I was young is coming to the light. I fully understand what he was saying. So okay. Yeah, stuff like that. So, how, how long how long you been here at this college? Since last year, this is your second year here. Yeah. All right. So, in the in the six months of you learning that you're an Israelite, is that something that you hold dearly? Is that something that's important to you? Yeah. How important is it? It's, it's, important. it's very important, it's right? Why? Because we've been brainwashed in these it, here in America. We've not learned who we are. Yeah. All right. And our people. That's why we're out here to show our people that. But you have a level up. All right. What's that? Well, give me First Peter four and four real quick. Real quick, because not everybody can come up here and say that, oh, I'm from the tribe of Judah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't do that. Half these people out here, they think they they, they just niggas. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to deal with some things. Like, the brother was trying to go over some laws and bring out some laws to you. And we're going to make sure, we want to make sure that you have a complete understanding of what it means to know that you're an Israelite in these last days and what you must do. All right? Read the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 4. Bring it up. Wherein they think it strange that he run not with them to the same access of riot, speaking evil of you. You see that? This is just this is just one scripture in the explaining of what took place when we walked up. You see what I'm saying? They think it's strange. They say, well, you go. You go ahead. Hey, you brainwash. You go ahead. They think it's strange because we don't run with them. Because we don't share the same mindset when it comes to our laws. When it comes to the keeping of God's commandments. Right. All right? There's more on that? Read. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though it been some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in so much ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see that? That's what you should be striving for. You should be striving to get a better understanding, a better walk, so that you can receive the kingdom when Christ comes back. Right, All right? right? Read that again from the, from the top right there. Verse 13, but rejoice. It says, but rejoice in knowing that you're an Israelite. 
But you have to come into keeping the, the fullness of keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. Read. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. So you're a partaker of Christ's suffering. Now you know the reason why Christ died. Now you know that he died for the nation of Israel, which you're a part of. Right, Everybody right. cannot claim to be a part of the nation of Israel. Right, that is right. a chosen group of people by the Most High God. That is who we are. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. You are God's chosen people. Read. That when his glory shall be revealed. When his glory shall be revealed. When Christ comes back to judge America. When Christ comes back to judge the earth. That when his glory is, is revealed. Ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You're going to be glad also. Why? Because you put in the works in the keeping of the commandments. Right. Don't think, don't, it, they think it's strange because you don't run with them. They think it's strange. You probably got classmates looking over here right now. They think it's strange that you're standing here in front of men talking on a microphone. All right? And you shouldn't care. Why? Because your salvation is at hand. Right. Christ died for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. Christ was a black man according to the Bible. Right. You sisters right. coming out that door, you're God's chosen people. You are princes on this earth. Right. I bet you Benedict is not going to tell you that. Benedict is not going to tell you that God chose you for a specific reason. All right? right. Benedict is not going to tell you that you have a dress code that, follow, that you must follow given to you by the laws of God. Get out. Get out. But you think it's strange. You think it's strange when you see men come out teaching you. Remember, like I always say, Noah taught the people for hundreds of years on about this ark and the destruction that was coming to uh, the, the times that he was there, that he lived. They thought Noah was strange when he said that it's going to rain and the earth is going to be flooded. People thought that was strange. You might think it's strange that we say destruction is coming to America. The reason that you see prophets line the streets all over America today is because destruction is coming. Right. Christ is coming to save you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans if you're keeping the commandments. Give it to the Romans 10 and 12. Because there's something required of you, sister. What's your name? What's that? Briasia. I'm going to forget in five minutes, all right? Briasia. <laughs> Have you ever heard that you're an Israelite, according to the Bible? That the Bible says that you're an Israelite. Have you ever heard that? You've never heard that? How, long, how old are you? 18. 18. You ever been to church? You're going to church your whole life? No. Nah, not your whole life? You like church? Why? Because it's in your spirit to have a, 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 an attachment to the creator. It's in your spirit to want to be a righteous individual. But America doesn't teach us how to be righteous. Right. right? America gives us all of the filth and we wallow in that filth. We accept that filth. But God says that you're his chosen people. How y'all sisters doing? So now the, the brother has told you that you're an Israelite, right? Do you know what an Israelite is? Get Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6 real quick. This is for everybody. Don't go nowhere. This is for everybody. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, creation, right? What's your name? Kanaja and... Tashaya, I'm going to forget all y'all names, so just bear with me. I remember Jacob because that's, that's our forefather, all right? But the scripture says that God chose you to be a special people. Who's he talking to? Who, who's he talking to? The whole world or just the Israelites? The Israelites. If I said prove that, could you prove it? Yes, in the Bible. That's how you're going to prove it. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Because we got to prove all things. This Bible has to become a real living book to you. Right, See, right. it's not a real living book when you don't understand that you're an Israelite. Right. If you just think this is just something you pick up on Sundays and go to church, then you are still unaware of what the, the, the right. treasures that are hidden in this book for you. Right. You don't understand what is written in this book for you. Right. And it's our job to come to these streets and teach our people. Nobody's going to teach us. Right. Nobody. Benedict is not going to teach you what thus says the Lord. Only men of God can teach you this. Right. Deuteronomy 1 verse 1. Get out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Come on. On this side of Jordan. So this was after the flood. This was after the redemption of the children of Israel out of Egypt. Who are the children of Israel? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. If you look on this sign right here, on this sign, this is what God calls you. 
on this sign, these are the names that we have acquired during slavery. How come from first to 12th grade we didn't learn this? Why didn't our first grade teachers and second grade teachers teach us that, you know, your, your foreparents came over here on slave ships, that you're really the Israelites in the Bible. Your history is in the Bible. We get all this fluff during the one month of February about black history, but nobody's telling us that we're the Israelites. We glorify men who've done things here in this country, but we still don't learn that we're the spectrum, the most beautiful people that God has created. Right. Go back to right. seven and six real quick. I want you to really understand, this is not written to everyone. This Bible is not given to everyone. It was written by the Israelites to the Israelites so that we can remember who we are in these last days. Because these are the last days upon this earth. Destruction will come to America. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art holy people. God says that you, Briasia, you, I told you, cut, 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 I know it's okay, Kanaja and Tishaya, and what's your name? Shanice, you are chosen people. All right, come on. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. So God chose the Israelites, you sisters, you princesses, to be a special people. Come on. Unto himself. No, I came out here today and did that unto myself. Unto himself. How long has this been written in the Bible? For thousands of years, it's been right here that God chose you to be a special people unto himself. Meaning all of the people that he created on the planet Earth, he looked upon us and said, that group of people right there, I want those people. Those are going to be my chosen people. Let's find out. Read. A special people unto himself. Above. Say what? Above. Below. Above. Equal to. Above. All people that are upon the face of the earth. So guess what? Do you believe that you're above all people on the face of the earth? Do you believe that? You might not believe it, but I guarantee you, you feel it. Innately, you feel it. When you wake up in the mornings and you go in the mirror and you flip your hair or whatever you do, and you start washing your face, tell me you don't feel like you're somebody special. Tell me you don't feel like there's nobody on the earth that compares to you. Guess what? There ain't a woman on this earth that compares to the beauty of the so-called black woman. There is not. You are the beautifulest people, if that's a word, beautifulest. I made that one up, I believe. Huh? Keith Murray. I made that up. But guess what? You, the, you There's nobody on earth that can top the beauty that you sisters behold. Read. The Lord did not set his love upon you. Nor choose you because you are more in number than any people. So it wasn't because we was this big, large group of people that God chose us. Come on. For ye were the fewest of all people. So we were the fewest of all the people on the earth. Come on. Because the Lord loved you. Because he loved you. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Come on. Hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. And redeem you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So this happened during the time that we were in slavery in Egypt. Guess what? It's going to happen again because we're still in slavery and in bondage right now here in America. Let's not forget. Yes, we have the privileges to go to school, right? We have the privileges to get jobs. We have privileges to do all these good things here on the earth. But guess what? Have we forgotten that our foreparents were slaves? Don't you know that there is an amendment still in the Constitution that allows that will allow them to put us back in slavery if they want to enforce it? Did you know that? Yeah. The 13th Amendment. We can act, they can, if they really wanted to enforce this, it could be done. It's by the grace of God and through the prophecies of this Bible that we're able to stand out here and teach our people now. Right. They can't stop us now because we can read. They can't stop us now because it's prophesied that in these last days, the Spirit of the Lord is going to be poured out upon us and we're going to teach our people and raise them up. Right. Let me do the random chapter uh, uh, 28, verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Let's yeah. find out what happened and caused this condition. Come on. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. I want you sisters and brothers to listen real closely. Who is being spoken to here? Who's the audience? Who's the audience here? The Israelites, right? That is us. 
It says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15, read it from the top again. I want you to pay attention to what's being said here. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass. Moses is telling the Israelites, but it shall come to pass after we've been redeemed out of Egypt. He said, but this is what's going to happen to you Israelites. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we don't listen to the voice of our God, if we don't pay a close attention to what he's given us, what? To observe, uh -huh. to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it says all these curses shall come upon us and overtake us. Let's find out if this happened to us. I want you to, to pay attention and let me know if this Bible is telling the truth. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What the Bible said? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What is this called? Slavery. It's called slavery. When did this happen? What a sign. 1492. Yes, this brother has some understanding. 1492, 1619. This is what the Bible is talking about. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. This is why everybody cannot claim that they're the Israelites and that they're the Jews. Because everybody does not fit these prophecies in the Bible. Right. You are the only people that fit the prophecies in this Bible. Take right. a look at this. Did this happen to your people? Did this happen to your people? Bring it up. Yes, it did. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and bear with longing for them all the day long. You ever seen movies like Roots? You ever seen Roots? 13 years of, uh, what's it called? 12 years of slave? When they took that sister's uh, children, what did she do? She cried the whole movie. Solomon was like, shut up. She said, shut up. If somebody took your children, would you not wail and cry for them? Read it, what the bottom of that precept said? And thy eyes shall, it says, your eyes, thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Meaning you're going to see your children being taken away from you and there's not going to be anything you can do about it. Did that happen to your four parents? That did, right? So guess what? That is one statement that clarifies who the Israelites are. All right? Jump over to verse 45. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. And shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So it said that all these curses were to come us and pursue us until we be destroyed. In 1863, when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, guess what that symbolized? That symbolized the mental destruction of you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's what that represented. We no longer have to put chains on your ankles and chains around your neck and chains around your hands anymore because you have been completely destroyed mentally. When you destroy a people mentally, you don't have to put chains on them. Carter G. Woodson said, once a slave is destroyed, and you don't have to tell him to go out the back door. He understands to go out the back door. And if there's not a back door, he'll cut a hole in the wall and make a back door. That's a destroyed person. That is what has happened to us. So we have to come back. It says that these curses are going to be upon thee for a sign. Meaning you're going to be able to look at a specific group of people, Brasia. You're going to be able to look at a, a specific group of people and identify them through the curses. How do I know that that's David H. Swinton Camping Center right there? How do I know that that's the place to go in? That right there. How do I know that that's the campus center? The sign says it, right? Because that's a sign. God said that this Bible... These curses are going to be a sign for you. This is how you identify who you are. Jump over to Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 real quick. Hold Deuteronomy. I want to show you. Because the Bible is, is calling us. God is calling his people back into the fold right now. Today. Right here in Columbia, South Carolina. Three. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner. God said that an ox knows his owner. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. And an ass, a donkey, a jackass knows his master's crib. But Israel. But who? But Israel. But the Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, doth not know. You don't know who your God is. You don't know where your land is. You don't know anything about your heritage that's been stolen from you. That's yep. been taken from you by force. 
You don't understand that you're the glorious, most glorious people to walk the earth. Right. This is why we're here. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read down from where you was at. Let go. 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. It says that these curses are going to be upon you for a sign and for a wonder. Because there's not a black man in America that doesn't want better for his people. There's not a black woman in America, or maybe there is, that doesn't want to see a righteous black man stand up and redeem their people. Come on. Tell me you don't want redemption. Tell me that you're satisfied here in this country the way that you're living. The way that you see your people being shot down and treated here in America. You're satisfied with that? Do you want to continue to live like that? One day, it could be you, brother, getting shot down in the street. Do you understand that? Just out of the blue. You think that these people that, do, that have committed these atrocities just did this on their own? They didn't come up with this in their own mind. This is through the will of God that they do this to us. Right. We're going to find out. The Bible explains, it, explains this. Read down. Verse 27. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So it says because we did not serve the Lord our God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Meaning he gave us everything. He gave us the other people to be our servants. We weren't happy with that. He gave us everything on the earth. Guess what? We still wasn't satisfied with that. We wanted to be like the other nations. Right. Just as today, we have our sisters and brothers out, they want to be like the other nations. Bring it out. When they do things, you know what? Damn, that looks good. I want to do that. This is what we do. But God gave us a specific way of living. We wasn't satisfied with it. So let's find out what happened. Read. For the abundance of all things, therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies. Therefore the Israelites shall do what? Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies. So because our foreparents broke these laws, it says, therefore, you're going to serve your enemies. Because you didn't want to listen to what I said and do what I commanded you to do, now you're going to serve your enemies. But not just that. Listen real closely. Read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. No, which th they decided in their own mind, let's go to this part of Africa and snatch these people up and bring them to another country. They thought of that on their own, what the Bible said. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. So you see that? It says, which the Lord, which the creator of heaven and earth shall sin against thee. They didn't think of this to do it on their own. God put it in these people's spirit to come and put us in slavery. This is what happened. Read on. And hunger. And hunger. When you want food, right now, you want you might go to what y'all got right there, KFC. Who owns KFC? Right, man. The who? Right. Don't be scared. He ain't out here. And if he is, we don't give a damn. The so-called white man owns it. That's who owns it. If you want uh, 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 groceries, where do you go? Where do you shop at? Publix, Food Line, Piggly Wiggly. Who owns those stores? The so-called white man. Read it again. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. When you want food, you got to go to your enemy. Come on. And in thirst. When you want water, you got to go to your enemy. If you don't pay your water bill, what's going to happen? Who, they're going to cut it off. And who, who owns the water, who owns the water uh, supply? Who owns that big ass blue tower over there? Who owns it? In Flint, Michigan, they don't even have clean water. It's been three, four years. They still don't got clean water. What's going on with that? Because we don't control the water system. Right. Even though it was put here and given to us by God. Right. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. Where you shop at? Where you get your clothes from? JC Penny, uh where? Some of these places out of the mall. This is where you get your shop, you do your shopping at. Do your people own these shopping facilities? No. It's owned by the so-called white man, whom the Bible calls your what? Enemy. Your enemy. Read. And in want of all things. You're going to go to your enemy and want for all things. If you die, guess what you got to go get from your enemy? Cash. A death certificate. You can't even die without paying the enemy for being dead. That's right. When you're born, what do you got to get from your enemy? A birth certificate. In order to drive on these streets, what you got to get from your enemy? A driver's license, toothpaste, toothbrush, toilet paper, all your essential living things. You're going to get it from who? Your enemy. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites.
walking around saying that I'm a black man. I ain't saying that no more. It's our man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.